Hello chess lovers, Surin here and in this video I would like to share with you a very beautiful game played by Hungarian chess grandmaster Laszlo Barcai. Barcai is on the black side and his opponent is Hungarian international chess master Laszlo Sapi. This game was played in 1963 in Budapest. But before starting our game, as usual, here is a chess puzzle for you. It's white to move and mate in three. Try to find the mating line and I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Back to our main board and now without further ado, let's go for our game and see what happened on the board. Sapi opened up with d4 and Barca responded with d5, c4, e6, knight f3, c6, knight c3, and knight f6, we have the semi-slav defense and bishop g5, white is choosing the anti meron gambit. Here, black has several choices, can either play knight d7 or bishop e7 or h6, but in our game we have d takes c4, botvinnik variation, which is a very sharp line and requires a huge theoretical knowledge. White responded with e3 and b5. Yes, black wants to save the one pawn, after which we have a4. White is now undermining black's pawn structure on the queen side. Bishop b4, we have bishop e2. Knight d7 first. This b knight is coming to support the knight on f6. And after castling king side, we have queen b6. Yes, black is strengthening his pawn on b5. Queen c2 was played with bishop b7 and rook d1. Not the strongest continuation, capturing on f6 and then playing b3 could have been better. But in our game we have rook d1. Here we have a6. Yes, all the time black is strengthening his pawn chain on the queen side. And later this black pawns will actually play a very important role in the game. Rook c1 was played. This time we have c5, knight e5. We see the exchange of knights on e5 and bishop takes c3. Yes, black is also getting rid of the knight on c3, after which black knight jumps on e4. Bishop f4 was played. This time we have b4. Yes, black pawns are marching forward and already white has to be careful. But it was in here that Laszlo Sapi made a mistake and played a5. A very strange move. White is simply giving away his a pawn without any compensation. Instead of a5, it was better to pin the pawn on b4 and then yes, black can go for c takes b4, bishop takes c4, but in our game after b4 we have a5 and in here Barzai simply won the pawn on a5. c takes b4 was played, c takes b4 and bishop f3. Of course, capturing on c4 is not a good idea because of this knight c3 move. And yes, white can face serious problems. If rook e1, then rook c8. The past pawns can easily finish up white's army. Or after c takes b4. If bishop takes c4, then again, knight c3 is a very strong move. If rook d4, then rook c8 is coming. And again, Black has a huge advantage. That's why after c takes b4, we have bishop f3. Black attacked the knight on e4 and rook c8. Yes, looks like that Black is on the right path, is giving away his knight on e4, but it was better to do it by going for c3. If bishop takes e4, then bishop takes e4. And then Black can castle king side. And yes, Black has a huge compensation. With his three passed pawns, Black can win the game. By the way, after bishop f3, moving back the knight on c5 is not a good idea because white can simply capture on c4. If bishop takes f3, then g takes f3. And if rook c8, then bishop g5 is very strong. You can't even castle king side because of this bishop e7 move. And yes, actually in this line, white is managing to create problems for black. That's why after bishop f3 we have rook c8. White accepted the peace sacrifice. Bishop takes e4 is on the board and b3. Queen b1. This time we have bishop takes e4. Queen takes e4 and black castled king's side. Yes, although white is now managing to won the pawn on c4, but the b pawn is marching forward. b2 is on the board. Look at this, guys. 
Rook takes c8 was played, rook takes c8 and queen b1, a very passive move. Queen b7 could have been better, although after queen c3, yes, black is maintaining advantage. But in our game, we have queen b1 and queen c3 is on the board. e4, and there it goes, the a pawn is marching forward, bishop e3. By the way, if we move like bishop d2, then simply queen b3. And you can't even capture on a5 because of this devastating queen takes d1 move. And then rook c1 is coming, black is winning. In our game after a5 we have bishop e3 and a4. Yes, this a pawn is unstoppable. Bishop d4 was played a desperate attempt, but it turns out that this move steps into a deadly combination. You can pause the video and try to find Laszlo Bartzai's next moves. Ready? In here, Laszlo Bartzai simply munched the bishop on d4. Look at this epic move, guys. Rook takes d4 was played and we have rook c1 check. Rook d1 and rook takes b1. And believe it or not, but after rook takes b1, Laszlo Bartzai played a3 and we have a resignation. If rook d1, of course, you won't play a2, there is a back rank weakness. Simply king f8 and then this a and b pawns are unstoppable, but like he's winning. That's why after a3 we have a resignation. A very beautiful final combination, I think. Let's take a look at that queen takes d4 move once again. Yes, after which rook c1 check is coming and then a3 and the game is over. Thanks for watching. If you liked this game, give the thumbs up. For more games, consider subscribing to my channel. Also, press the bell button to get notified about new uploads. I will see you in my next video. Take care.